So some people rely on religion to find meaning um, with these conditions and limitations, and others, such as myself, rely on art. Could you introduce yourself for Sorry. the audience? My name is Francis. Hi, my name is Hannah Griss. I'm Amelia. So I'm Will. Hi, I'm Fiona Gray. I'm Imogen. We're Philly Napoli. My name's Isabel. Hi, my name is Olivia Jo. Hi, I'm Ms. Cara. Yep, yeah, um, so I'm Rhiannon. I'm Mia. My name is Emily. Hi, I'm Danny. That I get that. Uh, cut that out. <laughs> I really like objects you can hold. Um, I really like that sort of tactile element. Um, and I've always been sort of quite interested in narrative. I like sort of character creation. I think at the moment I'm primarily um, interested in processed materials. Yeah, like mainly hand prepared materials. Um, like to me, I think the process is as um, or maybe more interesting or important as the final piece. Another huge theme of my work is um, hybridity and cultural identity. Thinking, thinking about um, how we consume different modes of culture from music to films to uh, fashion, art. I'm also interested in some of the more formal aspects of making artwork, so um, composition and aesthetics and trying to evoke certain um, atmospheres. Um, I've been reading a lot of like folk tales sort of, like recently and I'm quite interested in how sort of historical narratives particularly in folk tales at the moment uh, have sort of changed over like the course of time. It's predominant themes of uh, home, childhood, um, adolescence. I'm particularly sort of interested in that sort of period of growth between being um, like a teenager or a child and an adult. I use a lot of motifs like puzzles, fragmentation, um, to sort of recall memories and that feeling of, of home. The two really important things for me are form and colour. Um, I say colour comes to me more naturally, but it's something I don't, don't think too hard about. Those colours I well, translate into mostly organic form, shapes and gestural marks, which I take from inspiration from all, all sorts of things. I can translate a, 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 a known object, a dress, into a complete abstraction where you wouldn't know it was based on that unless you read about it. Overall, I'm really interested in how light looks in a space, specifically artificial light. Um, I've researched neon light a lot, and with that, I am really intrigued by signage and advertising. Uh, recently, with urban space being so empty and feeling foreign and weird, that has kind of cropped up in my paintings and films. From sketches and drawings, just collecting sort of uh, tracing shapes that are around um, my space in the room, breaking those forms down and then making them really smooth or piecing it together and I feel like I've got like a building block of my studio or my room or everyone around. I really like, you know, surrealism, Dada, I really enjoy um, constructivism, a lot of like the graphic media and paraphernalia around um, like Russia from like 1910s, 1930s. My practice centres around the nude female figure. I predominantly use myself as a model. I am um, aware of the place that the female nude may have within a historically patriarchal art history canon. In choosing to only represent myself in this, I feel, in at least some small way, I can reclaim the gaze over my own form. I make work kind of about around these sheep bones that I found a few years ago, which I take out and about with me and build monsters out of them. Um, but they've sort of come to mean different things, especially during lockdown. I look at the idea of containment 
Um, this can be the containment of anxiety and other bodily sensations, um, so more personal in particular, or it can also be more universal, so um, government attempts to contain a pandemic, for, for example. Exploring emotion and how colour uh, incorporates itself into that. The work is, is sort of centred um, or stemmed from my chronic illness that I was diagnosed with um, a few years ago. Um, it started off exploring how that whole thing kind of affected me and the emotions that I associated with that time in my life. Both a celebration and a questioning of the conditions and limitations um, that come with this specific collective time and space that we're all in right now. So yeah, the here and now, and what are the things that define it? I've focused a lot on the idea of multiplicity lately and the way things multiply and spread. And I think that's because of the natural subconscious or conscious knowledge of our individual trans transience. So we find meaning in unity. So historically, lots of crafts haven't been considered necessarily art forms all the way back to Renaissance times when artists were seen as craftsmen instead of actual like artists. And I've sort of been thinking about how a lot of craft, a lot of the interior stuff within our house is all quite arts based and design based, but is often like kind of ignored. The way that my current work really began was just me sitting in my room and thinking, how am I going to adapt my art practice? I could hear people above me shuffling around. And I just started to think about all these bodies that were all around me and how I felt so incredibly isolated that then paradoxically at the same time I was completely surrounded by other people. So I've started to really think about this liminal space of the lockdown domestic and how we're all connected somehow in this like collective isolation. landscape painting one of the the first artists that i really got excited about was david hockney going to his show in 2011 i'm influenced by the crags by the how the kind of ever-changing color interesting rock formations really interest me um and i've recently got really into evolution um through finding um a youtube channel called eons which has really concise videos about different species and interesting fossils. I really love the paintings of Ed Ruscha and Edward Hopper because of their kind of the way they create space and the use of, use of light and color. I love uh, like old noir films from like the 40s. Lately I've been enjoying like 90s erotic thriller films. I'm really interested in the Celtic revival as a sort of historical period and the way that um, these Celtic stories were being reimagined. In terms of contemporary I'm really interested in Rachel Whiteread and her sculpture. I find them really inspiring in the sort of dealing with a uh, negative space um, and absence as a theme. I remember reading lots of Lauren Child picture books as a child and picture books have always been something that really interests me. They all sort of have to have narratives and not like people and things. Mm -hmm. um, figures or characters or things with faces like really appeal to me. So I've always loved the work of Louise Bourgeois and the way she draws on past traumatic experiences uh, to produce her work and to transfer some of those emotions onto the viewer. Compositions and materials which are quite grotesque sometimes and distorted. Helen Frankenthaler, um, you know, she's known as a colourist and vast abstract scapes. I also... Particularly, I'm interested by her technique of the stain painting method, where she's um, she would pour and, and, and mop paint onto unstretched, unprimed canvas, um, almost like a dyeing technique. Um, Hundred Vasa, he um, from from Vienna, um, he you know worked with spirals. Every single painting of print, even his architecture, is evolved around spirals. He never had any straight lines in any of his work or his architecture. One thing that he's went on to do following the sort of decorative tradition in Austria was he would bend 
emboss bits of gold or silver um, onto the canvas. The artist that's inspiring me most is Prissa Philly, I'd say. Um, there's a lot of his ideas about that, like cultural identity and materials is very aligned with what I'm doing. Um, and film's huge as well. Um, like I spend most of my time just screenshotting um, stills and drawing them and they like influence my compositions a lot. I've been really influenced by the work of Dominique Pettigar. He creates these beautiful audio narratives where he puts in snippets of recordings of domestic life. So you'll just hear like a child run by or a voice, almost like ghostly characters. And this whole idea of like this ghostly unseen figure is something that is reflected quite a lot in my painting. It's this idea that you know someone's on the other side of the wall, but you don't actually know who they are. Like, you know, you have neighbors, but I don't know about you, but I wouldn't recognize my neighbors most of the time. Um, so it's like this ghostly companion that we have. Yeah, I've lately been very interested in the work of Lee Wall because I think she she's asked herself a lot of the same questions I have um, uh, theoretically. Um, then David Almeida, I think, is really interesting um, because he created a sort of he's managed to create sort of closed systems between a, uh, within a single object. And I think in terms of theory, also Richard Long and Gormley are really inspiring because of the humanity in their work. Um, I think that's really important. And Eva Hesse, I really like how absurd um, her work is. So yeah, I really like her too. I don't play quite like you do your the diamond and the games are wrong. Drawing's kind of been the main thing. I mean, actually, I'd never painted a picture really before January last year. Like, I'd never, I'd always done sculpture and I'd, I'd drawn a bit before. I was in LA last year and like I had the opportunity to do painting before lockdown started. And then it timed it perfectly because then I came back and I was in lockdown straight straight away and I had like not very much space. So just the painting and then the drawing has kind of been the biggest change, uh, I guess, from lockdown. Uh, but I don't know whether that could have happened anyway if it weren't for lockdown, but. I feel as though it's definitely been driven on because of the restriction. It's just like exciting to just like have a whole sort of thing. That you, I mean, I thought you, I, I felt like a child again. <laughs> For this project, lockdown was a real um, push to like start 3D printing. It's something I've always sort of thought was really cool. That aspect has been a really positive push. Making it digital really gave me um, back a sort of lease of life that was taken away with COVID. I've moved from being predominantly a painter into film work and photography. Something I love about film is the ability to portray movement. It's so entirely different from the organic process of painting. I really enjoy challenging myself like this. Because of the lack of studios and all this, so I'm forced to make my work smaller, um, focus maybe more on Photography can bring a whole new dimension to an object that has a different presence in the three-dimensional realm. The idea of spreading and the dynamic that goes with that has been a lot more of a focus because of maybe the social circumstances and how now spreading something and communicating is the source of fear, whereas before it was a source of comfort and gave us a sense of unity. Um, so I think my subject matter has maybe become a little more, um, I wouldn't say pessimistic, but... <laughs> um, I guess I'm not doing as much printmaking as I would like to be doing. Um, I did screen printing and risograph printing last year and I've kind of adapted some of the mono prints I do on a small scale to be able to do that in my room. The biggest hurdle for me about making work in lockdown is just the motivation to do it. This is true of like everything in life and for lots of different people not just artists having the motivation and the, the desire to make work has sometimes not been there at all i've definitely been working smaller than i used to um part of that's a space problem and i've been doing a lot more printmaking than i did beforehand um partly because i acquired a printing press and some actual ink which was nice and also partly because it's just 
quite hard to do sculpture work from home sometimes and I'm trying to work out how to work smaller which my work has changed a lot um mostly because I started painting again my family put a ban on me blasting my strange soundscapes through the house so I started to paint instead but painting has definitely been something that has grown in my practice since the lockdown just because I found it to be one of the most accessible mediums to work with from home. But at the moment, obviously with the doors locked, it's like sort of like looking about what's in your space or um, what you have available or it's given me an opportunity to sort of go back and reassess old work and bring things back out. Like it doesn't have to stay like dormant. There's a bit of it at work so I can take that and bring it into the more present day. It doesn't need to just stay. So the biggest change has been the scale I work on. Um, I've had to minimise because I, I don't have room to build and stretch a large canvas. It sounds ridiculous, but there's been that inhibitor of like, I can't make mess everywhere because it'll have consequences. So that's been a limiter. But I like, haven't let, let it you know bog me down. You've got to adapt always as artists. And I plan to maybe upscale to maybe a, a, a meter long by 50 centimeter canvas different de- ideas are developing that I wouldn't have normally gravitated to because of it and I'm yet to see a positive outcome because I've got um still in sort of process and experimentation mode at the moment but I'd like to hope that in a few months I start to produce work that I'm really happy with over the last year obviously and like with the pandemic it's been it's been interesting to say the least feel like I'm kind of like uh, by myself in this but I've enjoyed working from home I had felt a lot of anxiety about going into the studios over the last few years and it wasn't really something I enjoyed but getting to work from home has actually really worked in my favor I'd say the probably the most challenging thing is just getting art supplies it's really difficult I know it's pretty like first world problem but it's when you're an artist and you, you rely so heavily on like physical materials, that's probably the hardest thing. So because I've been looking at collage, I've been researching and exploring the work of Hannah Hock. She's a Dada collage artist and I really like how she's merged humour and politics creating a really satirical response. I like how she cuts out bits from newspapers, sticks them all together and kind of makes fun at uh, politics and the contemporary landscape. In particular, I really like um, The Beautiful Girl, made in 1920. And of course, her most famous piece, um, cut with the Dada kitchen knife with the last Weimar uh, beer belly cultural epoch in Germany. Mouthful. It's called Face Eater by Dana Schutz. It's one of her uh one of her paintings from like 2004. It's really cool. It's just a head eating a bunch of bodies. <laughs> her work is really cool and the colours that she uses are really um bright and it's just a bit of a juxtaposition to the actual um meaning behind the paintings and so it's pretty cool. There's a print by David Hockney called Two Boys Aged. 23 and 24 some or maybe it's 22 and 23 I can't remember that I saw when I was like in the last couple of years of being in high school and has as an image has stayed with me like it's one of my favorite pieces of artwork ever and it's by Titian the three stages of life is in the National Gallery it's a really really beautiful kind of sexy painting of birth young lovers and death in the background. I think my favourite art object at the moment, it's not quite as profound, but it's my smiley faces that live on my desk. <laughs> just because they're like, I don't know, they're like happy and I just, I enjoy them and they kind of remind me that I should be happy when I'm mm-hmm. sitting at my desk studying every day, stuck inside. I'm reading a book at the moment called like A Little Life, which I really, I'm really, i really enjoying. It's such a good book because it's like it's one of those books where it's just like a slice of life almost an insight into people's lives and I sometimes see my paintings as that. Rachel Whiteread, she makes these, uh, she calls them torsos um, and they're casts of the inside of a hot water bottle and I think they're made of plaster 
or something like that. And I find them really amusing because a hot water bottle is an item that's supposed to sort of bring comfort and, you know, it's warm and soft and it's usually covered in this sort of like fluffy thing. But like they've been completely transformed into these like really disturbing looking torsos, as she calls them, and they're all hard and like really weird. I just got this book on Lee Lozano's drawings, which I've just been flicking through a lot. And like, it's just so interesting it's all paintings and drawings in the book she's not drawing from life it seems i mean she can't be because some of it some of what she's doing is ridiculous but like she just must have just had a wild imagination which is so nice to see an artist who just like is just really imaginative someone who just really like takes the time to like construct something in their mind that is you know doesn't exist and a film i'm currently like love slash struggling with is showgirls the famous 1995 flop it's like so funny and weird. The director had previously been like really successful. It has such a high budget. There's so many things that are really good about it, but it just like fails. And the last exhibition I got to go and see last term was probably the Walk Don't Wait, at like Leaf Walk in the Outer Boudreaux Hall. I really liked the the colours. Like there's about the indoorification of um, outdoor spaces. It was like a busy traffic crossing with the zebra markings on the floor and I'd use the lanterns to make uh, street lamps like the empty Varso cartons. I thought that was so cool. A music video for Don't Judge Me, directed by FKA Twigs and Emmanuel Ajay. The entire thing is a cinematic masterpiece. Music videos in themselves are these really gorgeous art forms. You can take someone else's musical poetry and create something visually gorgeous with it. Don't necessarily try and relate it to a tangible object or thing. Try and view it in with the idea that it's about form and paint and feeling rather than trying to replicate a view or a figurative drawing or an object. I'm quite happy for people to make their own interpretations about my work a lot of the time but for the piece that I'm submitting I was thinking about functionality but kind of distorting functionality and things slowly kind of taking on their own agency and becoming alive and I think it's quite nice to think about how the objects that we have in our everyday lives can kind of have their own lives as well. I really like my paintings and my artwork to be open-ended I don't always like just saying, this means this. I enjoy uh, people giving me different interpretations where they look at it and they feel something that I never thought of. And I usually want to figure out what they're about after I've painted them and I like look at them for a while. I think when people look at my work, it's almost a lot of the time described as almost like a optical like visual game. Like People try to trace out the figure and find them. And I would say to keep in mind the idea of the dividing of walls and the ghostly sounds that you hear behind them. In general, for my work to be subtle enough for it not to be clear what I'm trying to say. So I, I, I just wish that people will look at it and it will trigger, uh, trigger a lot of questions for them. And yeah, I hope you find it very weird too. <laughs> Primarily the... The stuff you're seeing in this exhibition is that I would consider documents of my work. It's uninteractive just because of like the nature of the website. And that my vision for this work is that each of those elements you can interact with and you can see and hold. My main focus for this work is duality. I want each piece to sort of become a whole like very like holy trinity style like it is each part is an aspect of my work and to understand it you need to like see them as a whole not as three separate works two works i've got on the exhibition are two um prints um from the series of prints i was making last semester these are made in tandem like i made them in the same like in the same space on the same day um i just think they work really nicely together there's kind of a meaning behind and a, 
a reasoning behind the placement of seemingly random or just kind of visually pleasing elements and how much do I want the audience or the viewer to kind of penetrate these ideas and get a hold of them and playing with something that's maybe quite private I want people to kind of when they look at the work be thinking about where it comes from why that's significant but also not to be concerned about like figuring out what it means I've been making a series of drawings using a mixture of watercolor oil pastel and ink um kind of experimenting with color but I found it's it's quite nice and freeing to make final works just on paper. I think I want people to just go in and put their own experiences on my work, just as the exhibition as a whole, because I think that's like my main focus at the moment. Yeah, it's just my life. <laughs> <laughs> Consider the entire space. Like everything has kind of been like thought through. It's like an artwork, like the colours in it, like the composition and like the scale of things really I just want people to look at the work and think about how they feel I think sometimes that can be a bit overlooked a lot you know you go into an art gallery and you see beautiful pieces and you don't like wait and think about how you feel about what you're looking at about the colors that were used and what they um, associate with those colors that they're that they're seeing and whether they have kind of any associations in terms of experiences, like if those, you know, if those colors have any special experiences that they that they've gone through. Um, Just to give you like a little insight into what I was thinking about when I was making it, was I was looking at a lot of like uh, sort of Neolithic, like figurative sculpture, and then I guess the way I'm displaying it is just like I'm I want to see how I want to play around with the scale. That's something I'm quite interested to do. And also I'm, I'm supposed to be 3D scanning it this weekend. So there seems as though there's quite a lot of scope to like alter the textures through the 3D scanning process. I would definitely like to invite them to get involved with the project. Um, and if they want to add in more puzzle pieces, um, they can absolutely get in touch and, and I'll send some out to them to contribute. The work I'm going to be showing is going to be taking sort of influence from the pieces that I've received back and telling the stories of what people have been up to in the, this last year and their most kind of memorable moments. When looking at my work, I would really like for people to consider their own bodies and the space that they occupy. I want people to really confront their own physicality. I hope to make people really aware of how certain aspects of their body might privilege you within your society. I also want people to consider that nudity is not inherently sexual, that it is quite ordinary. Enjoy the work first visually and then look beyond uh, what you see. So some of my collages are quite humorous on that first glance, but then they also refer to a more sobering, saddening, I guess, truth, you know, the pandemic and how our interiors are kind of, they're making us go loopy in a way. It makes you think of the reality of the circumstances we're in at the moment. You just look beyond the initial um, response. actually one of the most valuable things about art school like is the connections you make with other people with those flash flash eyes from behind the bar. i think it's so important to to have this kind of background awareness and knowledge of as much of art history as you can with those fuck me eyes well, um comment on how proud I am of like Mapper of organizing this online show because the university has given, given us basically no support and just told us that oh there will be no exhibitions this year no studio space and very little contact time with your tutors so for a cool cohort to rally and make something positive out of that and to work together and I feel like that's it's really brought Mapper together and we've all got to know each other a lot better um 
and I'm re- that makes me even more excited to go back to studios next year. 